Okay, I think we'll get going. And uh, Pam, if you'll continue letting people in as they as they join. Thanks so much. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us for our conversation with Catherine Borgia, Chair, and Nancy Barr, Vice Chair, respectively, of the Westchester County Board of Legislators. This is the first time that both Chair and Vice Chair positions are held by women. Before we get started this morning on a more serious uh, note, we want to send our thoughts and prayers to the brave people of Ukraine as we hope for an end to the current conflict, and as always, we hope for a restoration of peace. I'm Karen Everett, and I have the distinct honor of serving as chair of UJA Westchester's Government Relations Committee, and I'm a board member of the Westchester Jewish Council. I am delighted to welcome you also on behalf of Arnie Linhart and Karen Rosenfeld, Chair and Vice Chair of Westchester Jewish Council's Government Relations Committee. And we welcome Tara Sloan Goldstein, UJA Westchester Regional Chair, Bill Schrag, President of the Westchester Jewish Council, and Audrey Stein, Executive Director of UJA Westchester. This event is a collaboration between UJA Federation Westchester and the Westchester Jewish Council, two incredible organizations that work together to strengthen the Jewish community. UJA's network of hundreds of nonprofit partners, including many here in Westchester, provides essential services to hundreds of thousands of people in need. UJA also advocates on behalf of our partners and the needs of the community in the halls of government. None of our work is possible without our elected officials and the support of local, state, and federal government. Westchester Jewish Council, which is one of UJA's nonprofit partners, connects our county's Jewish community and strengthens relationships among over 130 member organizations and other ethnic and faith-based groups, elected officials, and the community at large. Before we get going with our program, I'd like to invite all electeds who are joining us this morning to announce themselves in the chat so that later we may properly acknowledge you during the program. Thank you so much for being here. Now it's my pleasure to introduce Catherine Borgia. Legislator Borgia was elected chair of the County Board of Legislators by unanimous vote at the beginning of the 2022-23 term. She is only the second woman to serve as chair and the first in 20 years. She represents District 9, which encompasses Ossining, Briarcliff, Croton, part of Cortland, and the city of Peekskill. Thank you so much for being here this morning, Legislator Chair Borgia, and I'll turn it over to you. Well, thank you so much. Um, it's wonderful to be here. What a great turnout for such an early Zoom. Um, and I see a lot of our friends are, um, are here, so it's wonderful. Um, I just wanna, I guess, talk for a few minutes, just a little bit about, about myself and my career. I started out in public service as um, sort of a mommy advocate. Um, I became interested when the uh, um, welfare reform in the 90s happened and I was a young mother. And um, the, back, the idea was that if people couldn't find jobs going back to work like as greeters at Walmart, they should open daycare centers in their homes. And I thought, well, that was really, um, gambling with our next generation's future to say, oh, somebody who doesn't have the skills to have a job at McDonald's should open a daycare center and watch children and get children ready for school. So I started to become very involved in uh, family and children's issues, really making sure that the investment that we make in our youngest um, children is significant because that, those are the dollars that pay off the most uh, in our society when we think about government resources. Uh, then I started getting involved in other types of advocacy work. I knew Assemblywoman Sandy Galef socially in, in Ossining, and then I started to work for her. And I really became, I, I said after my first week working for Sandy, I helped a woman um, who ha had um, about $70,000, a little bit less than $70,000 of unclaimed funds in 
New York State, and she couldn't get at this money. And she was she was elderly. She was probably in her early 80s. And um, I spent the whole day on the phone with the comptroller's office. And she at the end of the day, she wound up getting the money. The money got released to her. And she said to me, well, you've made the rest of my life possible. <laughs> so that was my first week <laughs> in public service. That was a pretty good first week because it really made me almost addicted to the notion that when you work in public service, when you work in government, your work impacts people so directly, so um, so in such a in such a strong and 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 meaningful way. Uh, local government, we're we're a slightly regional local government. We take care of the things that matter literally the most to people's lives, and infrastructure, and childcare, and working with nonprofits, and making sure people have the food that they need during the pandemic. So it really is. Um, it really is such a privilege to be working in the in this government. I worked, so I was a staffer, assembly staffer. Um, I, while I was working for San Diego, I got elected to the village board in, in Austin and I served two terms there. Then I became the town supervisor in Austin and served two terms there. And now this is my 11th year on the county board and I've done a lot of things on the county board. My first, my first committee was this, crazy committee called government operations that now is three committees. And then I was the majority leader for two terms. And then I chaired the budget for the past two terms. So I've had a lot of experience dealing with the nitty gritty of county government. So to end my time, I, this is my last term because we do have term limits. To end my time as chair, I think is real is very, very, very special for me. And I really thank my colleagues for putting that trust in me. But our board, really, really, really is a team. We work very well, well together. You'll hear from the vice chair, and I think she's in agreement with this, that the leadership team works very well together. We work very well with our minority leader, um, Margaret Quinzio, even though she is not of the same party as the rest of us. Um, but we really, uh, you know, we, we try to work together. Politics is crazy outside. We saw the, the State of the Union that, that some people think that politics is, is more of like a, a street brawl. But in the county, we really are able to pull together and get things done for the people of Westchester. So it really, uh, I'm so delighted to be serving in this role and to be partnering with organizations like all of your organizations to really make Westchester thrive and prosper. Good morning all. Arnold Linhart, I'm chair of the Government Relations Committee for Westchester Jewish Council. I'm joined by my vice chair, uh, who you, you will hear from later. It's my honor, first thank you, Chairwoman uh, Borgia, for your remarks this morning. It's uh, my honor to introduce the new vice chair of the County Board of Legislators, Nancy Barr. Uh, Legislator Barr was elected in her is in her third two year term and she represents District 6, which is comprised of Port Chester, Rye Brook and Harrison. Welcome Legislator Barr. Thank you so much Arnie and uh, thank you so much to Elliot and Pam for um, reaching out and putting this uh, program together. It's, it's wonderful to have, you know, partners like you. Um, so uh, I will just say that um, I don't have as long and storied a history in uh, politics as, as the chairwoman, but I certainly have the same level of um, devotion to public service. And, um, and that's manifested itself over the years in um, a lot of volunteer activity starting from, you know, before college really, but, but throughout um, college, throughout law school, throughout my various um, career turns, I, I am a lawyer uh, by trade. I uh, practiced at a major uh, Wall Street firm for four years uh, before moving up here to Westchester. And uh, at that point, I had a two-year-old son and decided that I, you know, I really wanted to stay home with my son. And I honestly never thought that would be the case, that that's something that I 
wanted to do because I think the time at the time when I was growing up, it was just, you know, women can do every anything and everything and you should do everything. And, you know, you know, there were debates about whether it was, you know, you should stay home or go to work or do both, whatever. But anyway, I, I did stay home and, um, and I had a second child and I got very involved in volunteering in the schools, which ultimately led me to run for the Board of Education. And I served on the board for six years from 2009 to 2015. And, um, and that was a great, great opportunity to put uh, my skills as a lawyer together with my passion for education and for children and families. It was a really, um, it was a great experience, although I will say, uh, since I live in Rybrook and this was the Blindbrook School District, I often felt like, you know, <laughs> this, this school could pretty much run on its own. I mean, it really doesn't matter so much who's on the board. I take that back now. I, I think there, you know, there was some, some skill involved, <laughs> but, um, but I always felt like I, I really, you know, I really want to help people who really need the help. And, um, so uh, while I was thinking what I was going to do when my daughter, my youngest, uh, graduated from, from high school and went on to college that next year, uh, we had the election of 2016, the presidential election. And that really sort of changed everything. It really rocked my world as well as many other people I know. And at the end of the day, that is what prompted me to run for um, county legislature. The county legislator. And so I've been in the job since 2018. Um, it so happens that year of 2017, when I was running, I also became a bat mitzvah. I, um, my sister and I decided, you know, we, we grew up in a pretty secular household, although both parents are Jewish. And um, we decided that was something we wanted to do. So we, we did that in May of 2017. June 1st of 2017, I had open heart surgery to repair a um, mitral valve. And then around June 24th of 2017, 2017 uh, we kicked off the campaign. And um, so it was kind of a, 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 a crazy year, but it was exciting um, also. And we, um, and uh, so I've been really, grateful to have this opportunity to serve in county government. I think so many people don't understand. I know everyone here does understand what county government does, but to the, um, to the chairwoman's point, you know, we really make a difference in people's lives. We really have that, you know, sort of very um, intimate, in a way, contact with people. We're sort of the first level of government where we really can help people find services and um, and we do we have a wonderful working relationship with our state representatives and um, and we're lucky enough to have great state representatives here in Westchester County so we we just um, it's probably been the you know besides my children it's probably been the most gratifying um, thing uh, that I've ever done and I feel very blessed to be able to, to, um, to bring um, my service to Westchester County and to, to all of you. So thank you for this opportunity to talk about it. Hi, Bonnie Linhart back again. Thank you, uh, Legislator Barr for your remarks. Um, I have the honor of introducing the elected officials and the representatives that have joined us this morning. Thank you for taking time out of your schedule. On, and I'll try to divide it up by uh, their positions. On the state level, we have Gary Brown and Allison Spindell, Representative to State Senator Shelley Mayer. On the county level, County Clerk Tim Idoni. Uh, representatives from our county executive, uh, Chari Asher and Emily Saltzman, representing our district attorney, Mimi Roca, Lila Curtin. And we have also been joined by one of the newer members, or the one of the new members 
on the county board, Jewel Williams Johnson, welcome. And on the local level, Victoria Presser, who is a member of the White Plains Common Council. Again, thank you for joining us uh, this morning. Um, if uh, I'm turning it back over to Karen Everett, who will be uh, handling the question and answer part of the uh, meeting. Thanks, Arnie. Thanks so much. And, and again, I, I uh, echo Arnie's uh, welcome on behalf of all of us who are involved in bringing this program to you for taking the time to join us. Um, I, I don't want to let um, the next minute go by without acknowledging uh, Elliot Forsheimer, who's here, who is uh, our fearless leader, executive director of the Westchester Jewish Council. And of course, um, uh, the staff who, who, on behalf of both Westchester um, Jewish Council and UJA Westchester. Um, in, in particular, I want to thank Margot Paz and Susan Glick for their tireless work in support of the UJA Westchester Government Relations Committee and bringing programs such as this um, to um, our catchment area and our uh, stakeholders. And as well as, of course, Pam Goldstein, um, who is behind the scenes running the Zoom and of course make, bringing us all together and making things happen um, and, and the other uh, tireless Westchester Jewish Council staff. So thank you all for being here. Um, it does fall upon me to run uh, the Q&A, um, but I just want to um, uh, reiterate as Chair Borgia and Vice Chair Barr both said, public service really does impact all our lives and it is in a sense a sacred service. And that is why uh, we run programs such as this one because it's vital to our democracy to keep the public connected with those we elect to do the very important job of, of governing. I just think it's always important to keep that uh, mission front and center. We did receive questions in advance uh, with registration, uh, which we will um, ask, but if there are additional questions, please put them in the chat and uh, we'll get to as many as we can. So uh, first uh, and foremost, um, it would be great to hear in a few sentences from uh, both of you, uh, what are some of the challenges that you see and the opportunities facing Westchester County this year and, uh, and the foreseeable future? Uh, Chair Borgia? Sure. Um, well, we're, we're in a very unique position right now in Westchester County, where after many, many years, all the years that I was on the county board, where we were struggling um, for financial resources, we're in a place now where we actually have some resources that we can devote to uh, doing some building that will help to sustain things in, into the future. Uh, when I first joined the board, um, the financial situation was, was not great and it got steadily worse over the first six years that I was on the board. Some, in my opinion, pretty bad financial decisions were made uh, that really left us with very little resources. Once um, uh, the current county executive took over, some that started to turn around and there were some hard decisions to be made in the first couple of years. Uh, I will say that our staff at the county level really a remarkable group of people, our finance staff, our budget staff, that uh, were able to use money that came in from the federal government in, in the two waves of money that we've received to really do what, what I would call a sustainable building of um, infrastructure. We've really caught up, although we're not there yet, as anyone who's driven at all this winter knows, uh, we've really caught up on a lot of our infrastructure projects. We've really caught up on um, being able to fund our non-for-profit partners in ways that are uh, more appropriate, not everything that they want, but, but that are more appropriate. So I think the big challenge right at this moment is to make sure when we have money to spend, when we have resources to share, that we do it in a way that creates capacity. So that we're not just spending money that, that are 
we call it one shot in the budget world, right? That is just spending it for current expenses, but spending it in a way that we can help organizations build, we can help communities build, we can help economic development, we can help people who need, who, who have the greatest needs with their most immediate needs, but also help with making sure that, that, the, that the rising tide does in fact lift all boats, because it doesn't always, right? We have to do things carefully so that it does lift all boats. So um, I, I, uh, I always say this with a caveat because I am Italian and we're a little superstitious, but our problem is that a problem is a good one, which is that we have resources and the problem is how do we spend it? How do we spend it wisely? But I am gonna knock wood when I say that. <laughs> yes, and we would say poo, poo, poo. <laughs> so we all, all, all groups, all faiths have these, uh, these ways of warding off the evil eye. Um, Vice Chair Barr, did you wanna add? Um, I think um, Catherine pretty much uh, summed it up, but I, I will say that, um, you know, coming off of the pandemic, which we don't know if it's completely over, and um, with a uh, situation with uh, rising prices and so forth and the war in Ukraine, um, there, you know, there are very specific challenges to our time and, and um, it exacerbates or has already exacerbated some of the things that we know are major issues in the county. Um, one of those, of course, being um, people being able to afford their, their homes and being able to afford to heat their homes and, you know, to live, you know, just have the basics. And that's something that we focus on a lot and we'll probably get into it more um, during this discussion. But um, I think that that is certainly an area where we, we need to put immediate and we have been putting immediate attention to. Thank you. You know, um, just continuing this stream in terms of taking, it, 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 it's a blessing to be talking about having resources um, rather than having defined resources. But um, in terms of serving the most vulnerable, because really um, that's um, as nonprofits that are hosting this event, really the, the quote business we're in. I just wanna um, hear a bit more um, in terms of serving the, the needs of the most vulnerable in our county, such as um, uh, nutrition, you know, access to food and nutrition, access to healthcare, particularly in the area of mental health. And then there's the big issue facing Westchester. And it's not only those who live below the poverty level, but, but many um, who are what we might call middle-class affordable housing throughout the county, which is a, which is a growing, a, a growing issue. So- um, Yeah, oh, can um, I start, Nancy, is that okay? Yep. Yeah. Um, so affordable housing is, is a need that we have identified for many, many, many years before the, right before the pandemic, uh, legislator, former legislator, uh, Frida Williams and I pushed for many years to have a housing needs assessment done because we knew that, that the cost of housing was, a, was a problem, as you say, Karen, at almost every price point, it, except for the very highest level, people are paying too much for their housing. The, um, the, the housing study that the Latimer administration did, which came up almost right before the pandemic, showed us that Westchester is not economically viable, even in the, even in the small long-term 10 years, 15 years, unless we address this issue, because people cannot afford to pay such a high percentage for, um, for their housing costs. So it's been a priority, I would say, of ours over the past five years, for sure, the past couple of budgets, uh, we worked very closely with the administration to make sure that that was one of our highest priorities, being able to enable um, more affordable housing to be built, more affordable housing that had a mix of uh, area median income because a lot of times developers had incentives to build that had affordable housing at 80% of AMI, but that left off a whole lot of people who really couldn't afford to have sustainable and, and healthy house, homes. One of the, one of the real um, divides that we knew about, but the pandemic certainly shown a spotlight on is that people are living in conditions that are, that are just not healthy. Uh, you know, I, in my community in Austin, people, uh, families in the parking lot of the library to get their internet during trying to do third grade in their mother's car on their dad's smartphone. I mean, there's so there's so much um, it, so much inequality that exists in Westchester County with respect to 
um, nutrition, that was obviously one of our highest priorities in the in, during the pandemic. And we have built a very strong partnership that, that existed, but I think put many, many more resources into, um, into making sure that there was a sufficient amount of funds for that. Uh, childcare, this was the budget that we put the most amount of money into childcare since, um, well, since I was advocating for it. So that at least 25 years. Um, my daughter's 26 now, so <laughs> it's been about 25 years that I've been working on this. Um, and uh, I, I feel like I've left some things out. Um, so we're putting our money where our mouth is. And, and I think that if you look at the, the last budget, really, really, really impressive budget. I, I was so proud. Uh, the, the county executive sent us a great budget and we made it really a, an exceptional budget that really, I think, used our money to put it into the area where, where, we, need, where we need resources. It's also, I'm gonna let Nancy talk about this because this is a particular area of, um, in her wheelhouse, but um, we, this is also the time since prior to me taking, prior to me becoming a board member that we've put the most money and reconfigured how we do mental health because we know mental health has been just uh, you know, just again, it was a problem before, but the pandemic just made it an enormous problem. I do work, um, I don't know if you guys know that I do work in a school for emotionally disabled children, so I see it every day, but I also see the opportunities uh, that, that care can bring to this population. So uh, I'll shut up so Nancy can yeah. say some more. <laughs> <laughs> So yes, mental health uh, or the delivery of you know services for mental health is uh, something that I really really feel strongly about. I you know I've had excuse me uh, plenty of family members who have suffered from various different types of um, mental health ailments, and I know so many people who who are suffering um, and whose whose children are suffering, and you know we're still even in 2022, have a hard time talking about it and people are ashamed of it. And, you know, if they only knew um, how prevalent it is um, and that you could really get a lot of help and support by talking to other people who are going through the same things, it would, it would just make such a difference. So I just, I like to put that out there whenever I speak to anyone, anytime, because I think it's just, we just have to, we have to just make that something that people are okay talking about. Um, but uh, to uh, Catherine's point, we did, um, you know, we were really happy to um, see our community mental health um, department expand a little this year. We have the, the fabulous commissioner of, um, Community Mental Health, Michael Orth, who is, uh, you know, he's a powerhouse. He is the most um, thoughtful patient, but also, um, you know, energetic in terms of really wanting to cast the net as far as possible and leverage all of the um, all of the community partners we have. So that is really a hopeful thing. Excuse me, <clears throat> and. Um, you know, I think that, you know, what he has said is that, you know, the very, very poor can get services, um, but, and of course the very wealthy can afford any kind of services, but pretty much everybody in between is really stuck between a rock and a hard place. Um, because even if they have insurance, it doesn't cover much, it doesn't cover enough, it doesn't have enough, um, you know, it's supposed to be, uh, you know, on par with other types of, you know, medical insurance, but it, it never really is because, you know, you're limited in how many visits you can have and so forth. And the other challenge is there are not enough providers. And, um, you know, right now we actually do have money that we can, you know, connect people to services, but we have an issue with having enough people to provide those services. So one of the things that I am also really hopeful to, that we can get going as some kind of um, incentive. And it wouldn't just be the county, we'd have to be working with you know, partners in other levels of government, but an incentive to get more people to um, go into the fields of social work and, um, and counseling and to make um, it just more widely available to 
more people because it's it's really an important um, important need. Yeah, it's a big issue. Service providers, the lack of service providers, not just in the area of mental health, but we know about the nursing shortages and a lot of of those kinds of things. Um, we'll come back to that, but I know that um, that on everyone's mind, uh, particularly at this gathering um, here, is um, is the rise in hate crimes, in particular anti-Semitic incidents. Um, certainly across the country, but but in particular, of course, we're living here in Westchester County, and um, we would like to hear what um, at the county uh, government level is being done to address um, this rise in anti-Semitism and this kind of feeling of, of fear um, that is permeating um, our communities. So whoever wants to, to take uh, Vice Chair Barr, you want to want to take it? You're off mute, so sure. Um, so happily, we do now have a Human Rights Commission and Director who are pro, who who is proactive on this front and who you know really wants to uh, be there for all groups, all kinds of you know. Um, all kinds of education on, you know, how to be uh, a good uh, a good ally, and how to, um, you know, sort of not amplify what the bullies are doing um, or the haters. And um, and he, uh, I did have a, a big conversation with him as I mentioned yesterday to talk about how, you know, how we're getting this message out into the community, and. As some of you know, or maybe all of you know, we did pass uh, last year this um, anti-harassment legislation. And it's pretty exciting because prior to that, the county only, um, only got involved in situations, um, the Human Rights Commission only got involved in situations where there was discrimination in housing, employment, or uh, I guess, public accommodation. But now there's actually a way for people who have been harassed to report that on the basis of, you know, being Jewish or black or Asian or whatever, um, uh, to report that to the um, Human Rights Commission in Westchester County, and it will be investigated. And if there's you know, if it's found to be um, a, a true situation, then um, it will be, there will be a hearing and there are some very substantial um, financial consequences, including punitive damages. And, and this, is, this is a big deal because of course, there's always the criminal route. You know, you can always go to the district attorney's office and do the police, but um, first of all, not everybody wants to, you know, make, you know, they're not comfortable with that, perhaps, or they don't think it really rises to that level or any number of things. But this is something it can be even reported, it can even be reported anonymously very easily on um, the county on the county's website. Um, I Debbie Friedman, who's my legislative aide is on this call, she can put that information in the chat, you can um, upload pictures, if you've taken pictures, you can also call, <clears throat> but, um, but I think that's really important. And I think that the Jewish community um, needs to make sure that everybody knows about this and that, and that you report things, even if you don't think it rises quite to that level, because it's important to know what's happening in the county. And if it's happening in one village or town, it, you know, it might happen in another, the next week. And, um, and we need to, you know, keep an eye on these things. So I, I know that um, he has spoken to many groups about this. He'll be talking to our Families Task Force on, on um, Thursday morning, which everyone is welcome to attend. And, and we've invited Elliot and Pam. Um, but, um, you know, and if you want him to come and speak to a group, he's more than happy to 
um, so that people are just aware that this exists and that they should take advantage of it. It was it was really landmark legislation. It moved um, this um, issue into a different place, and um, it, not just what rises to criminal um, to the status of a criminal of a crime, but but actual um, can be um, harassment can now be reported and tracked. Um, I just want to say that you know, as my role as the Westchester Jewish Council board member, I chair the interfaith intergroup round table where our member organizations come together and educate ourselves on these issues. And uh, we are actually working hand in hand with Tejas and Chala and the Human Rights Commission uh, for a program coming up on March 9th. I'm going to plug it since I've got the I'm off mute. Um, plug it. It's uh, the council's uh, program uh, bystander intervention training. And this is an important, important uh, way that we all can educate ourselves, not only about um, the, the particular legislation and how to recognize it and then report it, but what we can do to intervene and make a difference kind of on the ground as things are happening. Um, there'll be more promotion of this particular event. I know Tejas is working um, hard on that. Um, in particular, with regard to anti-Semitism, I don't know, um, Chair Borgia, you have um, something to add to the conversation? Well, I will say that um, I do think that constant vigilance is needed on, on these issues. You know, I, I always feel whenever nothing good in history has happened after a spike in anti-Semitic -Sem activities. Um, so it is something that I think we have to be very careful about noticing and recognizing. Um, I will say also during the pandemic, we've seen a rise in uh, hate crimes against Asians. Um, in uh, some communities up north, we've seen some um, anti-Black uh, things happening. In uh, Austin, the, the um, Dana Levenberg, the town supervisor, her um, sidewalk in front of her house was defaced. Uh, her Black Lives Matter sign was defaced, and some comments were written on her uh, on her front, the front of her house. You know, there, there's uh, going back to going back to the mental illness component. There is a a lack, I think, of um, control that people who have these views are, 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 are a little bit unleashed right now. Um, but I guess you can look at that as, well, this is the opportunity to sort of root out these, these issues. It's very important to us. I mean, anti-discrimination is very important to this board and a lot of our legislation looks at that. I will point to even uh, co-op disclosure. You know, we, we fought for years. The, the first woman chair of the county board, uh, Lois Brons, who, um, introduced this, this legislation 30 years ago. So sometimes these things take a while to say that you have to actually give a reason for, de for denying someone uh, admittance into your, into your co-op. And um, we do think with the active participation of the Human Rights Commission, which we're very proud of the work that they're doing, that there, there will be less soft discrimination in matters, economic matters in co-ops as, as a result of this. Um, so I think uh, you know Nancy hit the nail on the head that a lot of it is education, but a lot of it is us standing up. I'm really uh, glad, Karen, to hear that there's a there's a bystander training because I think a lot of times people don't know exactly what to do. You might feel uncomfortable, but you don't necessarily know what actions to take. So I think the more people know, the you know the the, the better it will get. But it is something that we can't turn a blind eye to. It, it, even these even these very small you know, incidents of graffiti or whatever, they matter because they're, they're just the first, they're just the first step. So um, yeah, I think we just have to keep working together. Nancy, I don't know if this is a good time for you to mention that we have spoken to the county executive's office. Yes, actually that was, thank you. I was about to, uh, to chime in. So um, we know that, you know, you do have your interfaith council that you, you know, you do great work with, but um, I know in talking to Elliot and Pam um, last month, the, the, you know, there is a desire and we think it makes a lot of sense to have something that the county convenes along these lines, because, you know, that sort of carries with it a different you know, a different um, level of, of um, 
interest. So uh, we have spoken with the county executive and this is something that we would like to convene. I, I certainly would, we would like to hear more from you about what you would hope to see in something like this, because um, while we don't, you know, we don't want to be redundant, but we do want to be, you know, we want to do something that will be really um, helpful. And so I think that we should have some further conversations about what this looks like, and then we can, um, you know, put something together. That's great news. Our view is that um, the more visible and united the broader community is in standing up and saying hate is, has, has no place here, no home here. We see the signs, um, many what I consider brave people to put them out uh, on their lawns and take a stand um, is very important. And it, it's, it's a bigger issue. Look, we as representatives in this program of the Jewish community are always concerned about anti-Semitism and appreciate the support, but it's a broader issue, um, whether it's based on ethnicity, on gender, race, et cetera. It, it's, it's a, and and it, it doesn't go away. It's almost sadly a human condition that if it, can, if it goes unaddressed, will continue to come back. So I am so happy to hear that it's um, that the county executive's office is getting and we will continue uh, this conversation um, in terms of our uh, gathering as, as a broader um, um, interfaith, intergroup uh, county wide yes. uh, community. Thank you so much. Um, we don't have that much more time, but I wonder if we could just touch on climate change here on the kind of local county level. We all are inundated with it and very concerned, obviously, on a global level, um, but we have our own particular issues here in Westchester and would love to hear your um, thoughts and, um, and um, agenda in this area. Uh, do you want to start or would you like me to start? Uh, uh, I should start. You're okay. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, this is obviously a, a big ex existential problem. Um, and, um, and actually my first uh, committee chair assignment was in um, environment, health and energy. And I am um, continuing to stay very involved in that. I'm actually the vice chair of our current committee. Um, you know, there are, there's plenty of things that we can do at the county level, and we have started to do, there's a lot more we should be doing. And we're, we're, you know, trying to get those things moving. But, um, you know, one of the things, you know, first of all, we, you know, the county executive and, and the board approved last year, a, a resolution that said there is a climate emergency, which was a big deal because at the beginning of the administration, there was a hesitancy, I think, because it was still so polarizing, which, you know, was ridiculous. But, but I, again, similar to the mental health issue, I think, you know, you have to talk about it, you have to put it out there and you have to show that this is really a priority. And, um, and so we have really made it a point in um, every meeting with public works and planning that has anything to do with building or infrastructure, we always talk about how can this be made more energy efficient. And you know, I'm sure that the county has embarked on a major program of replacing um, all of its uh, fleet, all of its county vehicles, or 90%, including the buses with hybrid or hybrid electric vehicles. And we're moving more towards all electric whenever possible. And um, also uh, we passed legislation that requires electric charging stations um, to be put in any new or renovated parking lots um, that the county owns. Um, unfortunately, we can't tell everybody else they have to do it, but if, if we can you know, govern ourselves, we um, have really moved towards um, you know, helping communities with the food scrapping program, which is a big, which was a big deal. And um, you know, we just talked yesterday in committee about, you know, having all of the county buildings participate in food scrap collection, because that is a major contributor 
to um, to our waste and um, and it doesn't it doesn't need to be it can be recycled and reused so um, so that's another thing um, we're and again working closely with state partners on and and federal for that matter on issues like you know flooding and um, you know how we can um, make our infrastructure uh, stronger and better to um, prevent um, to prevent changes that um, can lead to climate change or can or you know can hold up against the effects of climate change. So there is actually quite a bit going on and lots more work to do. Good to hear. Um, Chair Borgia, before we wrap, uh, anything? Uh, yeah, to you know, I think Nancy really summed it up. I worked on the, um, we called it the Global Warming Task Force under Andy Spano when I was a village trustee. So this is kind of a long emergency, but it's getting more acute. <laughs> yeah. I agree uh, with Nancy that I, it, it was a big step for us to say, hey, you know, we are going to acknowledge and accelerate our behavior change to be examples in how we can ourselves be more sustainable. But this is something that is going to require some level of sacrifice. I really applaud New York State because um, they have taken a real leadership role in this and that makes it much easier for local and regional governments like the county and the local municipalities to, to do work um, that, that helps to prevent. We are, Nancy touched on flooding, um, after Superstorm Sandy, we had to change a lot of our infrastructure, especially our um, wastewater and uh, storm and um, uh, the garbage processing facilities um, because they were on water streams and some of the some of the equipment actually got destroyed. So that was sort of phase one of oh my goodness, this, we had better do things for real. You know, I represent Hudson River communities, and if there is a one foot rise in the Hudson River, that is going to take out the, the railroad. <laughs> so there are some things that we need to work on with, with state and federal governments to say, okay, you know, listen, what's going to happen in the next 20 years and how do we start now? So it is something that is uh, top of mind, but also something that's going to require a lot of, um, a lot of people banding together to really make it work. Thank you so much. Uh, there's so, there, there are a lot of issues, but we are so lucky to have you as our county leadership. And we thank you so much for joining us. Um, this has been a great conversation. We could go on and on. Um, I'm gonna turn it over to my co-chair, Karen Rosenfeld to wrap it up. Okay, thank you. I'm Karen Rosenfeld, Vice Chair of Government Relations for the council. Karen Everett, Arnie and I thank all of you, leg legislators Borja and Barr, for joining us this morning. I'm sure everyone can agree. It's just been really wonderful, and thank you for your time. Um, two announcements. Please join us by Zoom on March 9th at 9.30 for a UJA Government Relations and Advocacy meeting um, with Representative Mondair Jones. Uh, registration details and a Zoom link will follow by email. And please save Monday, May 9th, seems far away, but it, it really isn't, at 6 p.m. for the Westchester Board of Legislators and the Council's Celebration of Jewish History and Heritage Month. Um, I, again, I can't thank everyone. I can't thank you all enough, and it's just been wonderful, and I wish everyone a, a great day, great rest of the day. Thanks. Thank you for having us and, and you know, contact us. We, uh, one of the great things about being an elected official is you get a lot of good ideas and suggestions and issues brought to you by, by people. We, you know, we don't know everything for sure. Absolutely, <laughs> yes. And we are, we are accessible. That's, I, I love that. I love that we, we can talk to people and, and really be connected. So take advantage. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you both so much. Everyone have a great day and uh, stay safe. Thank you. Thank you.